with soldiers that don't adjust well in the transition, um, we see it manifested in, in different ways, whether it be the 22 suicides that we hear about all the time a day among our veterans or any of the other manifestations, you know, drug use, alcohol use. There is a period, I think, of disillusionment when our soldiers transition out. Expectation was that it would be a relatively easy transition. Um, that was not true. <laughs> it's uh, much more difficult than, than you would think. We are institutionalized, for lack of a better term, because of the way we have to do business, and it's quite different um, than in the civilian sector. But to be a civilian again, it's hard to do. I don't even remember how to do it anymore. Some people think uh, everybody that you know served in Afghanistan or Iraq has PTSD and is going to jump at the loudest explosion or like, the littlest sound. I'm going to slam a door and I'm going to jump. No, that's not the case. You know, we're known to be yelling and screaming and there's this big stereotype veteran automatically almost equals, you know, PTSD, which does happen. I'm not undermining that, but there's much more to us. Uh, there's much more to the military than just all those things. Yeah, we're just regular people. We want to get into the regular world. We're not, you know, we're not assassins or anything. like. What do you see in these, these soldiers? What do you see in them as veterans that makes you want to come here and travel? Well, the Soldier for Life is a concept, it's a program that's much, much larger, but the Soldier for Life Transition Assistance Program provides, it's a career decision-making tool. It provides services to our soldiers uh, to help them make decisions as they, as they go through either their military career or their personal careers. I mean, I have a, I have a bachelor's degree in education and I was a teacher before I joined. Probably uh, see myself corporate somewhere, um, doing you know something that has to do with uh, development. You know, there's all I see so many avenues, but I haven't quite narrowed down what field I want to invest my time in. Uh, I'm trying to make some connections in the uh, Border Patrol or Customs Agency. I might go back to school and receive my master's or something. Maybe join in the administration, that side of the education field. We, in general, look at three different options, either school, employment, or small business. And so we help them through those processes. We help them make the decisions. We put them through a series of preparation classes and events, services. And then we also have a connect piece where we are connecting them with either employment or educational opportunities. You have to come to grips with uh, your, your lingo. They're getting what we call MO, MOC crosswalk, their MOS crosswalk, which is where they take their job and they're learning how that translates into civilian skills. If you just say, hey, I'm a cook or an infantryman or a driver, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, convey across that, hey, I was a leader, I was a team leader, I was a squad leader. Civilians aren't going to know what that means, so you got to put it in civilian terms for them. And that can be hard for a lot of us who have been in four or five years. We use a lot of acronyms in the military, and most folks don't know uh, what those acronyms are. And it's really difficult to not use that type of jargon for lack of a better term. There's certain language barriers that we learn, especially when you're in like a combat MOS, a combat job. It's another thing, MOS, when these jobs. It's going to be a huge transition for me to stop saying things like, cool. Roger. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Many of the employers that reach out to us, um, when they talk to me, they aren't looking as much for the technical skills as they are the soft skills and those attributes that come from a veteran. It's that loyalty and it's the self-discipline and that sense of responsibility and accountability. Well, I think the biggest thing is experience. There are so many civilians when they get out of college, they have a degree that says that they can do something, but when they go to gain employment, what kind of experience do you have? Well, I just graduated two months ago, I don't have any. In the military, you already have experience doing exactly what they want you to do. Obviously, there's a discipline side. Um, the main thing I would say is the service side. You know, you, you serve every day. And I can tell you that it's pretty selfless because most of the time you will not get the accolades you would expect in a regular job. So over time they get good at what they do and they don't expect the reward. So that's kind of a good thing um, because it trains you to serve others. I think a lot of things that you learn in the military transfer over. 
uh, hard work, discipline, um, integrity, all the things that I think are instilled in the U.S. Army transition very well to being an employee or employer in the civilian world. They're flexible, they're adaptable to any situation. Uh, they make things happen. They, they are doers, um, they are leaders, they are managers, they are organizers, and, and that's, what, that's what most of the employers that come to us are looking for. I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of intangibles coming from the military that you really need in the workforce. Just the discipline, structure, and attention to detail that the military uh, puts into their soldiers. I expect to gain experience with going through the process. This is a process. Um, getting to talk to potential employers um, to kind of get a read on uh, what they're looking at. I brought my resumes just in case I may get somebody to say, hey, you need to tweak this. Um, that, that's what I expect to get out of it. And if I get a job in the process, that'd be awesome as well. Um, but experience, I talked about that before. This is a part of experience. This is a part of learning. This is a part of growing. Um, anytime you can learn and grow, it's always a plus. Veterans Coming Home on Mountain Lake Journal is made possible in part by Twin State Technologies.